When you're creating your table, you might be in a situation where you want to create a table based on a certain value that's derived from other values of the table. An example of this would be that you have a people table with height and weight, and you want to calculate their BMI to find out who may be underweight or overweight. Now, how can you perform this query in a scalable way? Well, let's find out. I've gone ahead and created a people table. It has an ID, name, height in meters, and weight in kilograms. Now, if we want to calculate the BMI, we can do so by dynamically calculating it on the fly using the weight and height of each person. We can apply the mathematical formula here to take the weight in kilogram and divide it by height in meters squared. And running this query does give us the BMI of each person. If we wanted to sort the result by BMI, we can do so just like this. The question is, is this scalable though? In the query that we just saw, we are dynamically calculating this value every single time we query them. That means if we have 1 million rows, we are calculating the BMI 1 million times every single time we query them. This is obviously not that scalable. So how can we do it? The answer is using generated columns. Generated columns allows us to define a new column based on certain existing columns of the table. We can create one by adding a new column to the table. Use that generated always keyword and specify the formula that you want to use for the generated column. And at the end, you always need this stored keyword. Run the query and we get a new column on the people table named BMI. Let's query the people table and check it out. And we see the BMI being populated. So generated columns shows up in a table like a regular column, and you can query based on it like a regular column as well. You can use it in where statements, order by statements, whatever you have. The only thing is you cannot insert or update the value. It always has to be calculated based on the formula that you provided. The nice thing about generated columns is that it's indexable. So we can create an index on the BMI column, like a regular column that we have on the table. If we go back and explain the query earlier, we can see that the query planner is trying to use the index that we just created. Applying index on generated column is possible because generated columns are not being dynamically calculated at query times. Instead, their values are being calculated whenever the underlying column values are inserted or updated. In the stored keyword that we added at the end of the alter table statement indicates that this generated column is stored on disk. And that's why the values are already available when we query them. And that's why we can index them. So if we do update the value, for example, of Brandy, the top row here, update its height to 1.7, we should see a different BMI value. Great, the row has been updated. And in the background, Postgres automatically takes care of updating the generated column, and we should have a new value for the generated column for ID835. And we have a new BMI value for Brandy, who just shrank like a foot and still is way too underweight. That's how you can use derived values to query your data from your database in a scalable way. You could take the same idea and apply it to calculating profit margins on products table or you're analyzing financial data, the use cases are endless. There are two rules when it comes to creating generated columns. One, you can only reference the columns that are in the same table. And two, you cannot reference a generated column within a generated column. Now lastly, let's look at one last example of how generated columns can be handy when it comes to using Superbase real time. I've gone ahead and created a restaurant table with some dummy data. Let's take a look at the table. We have an ID, name, and location column. If you look at the location column definition, it's type geography point. This particular type comes from a PostGIS or PostGIS extension, and it represents a single point on a map. It's pretty much just a pair of latitude and longitude. But when we actually query them, we get this strip of string. This unique format is what allows PostGIS extension to handle geo-based data in a scalable way, but it's a bit too much for the human mind. In fact, if we go into the real-time inspector on your Superbase dashboard and set up a real-time listener, and if we update one of the roles while it's listening for database changes, 
we see the updated row popping up on the real-time inspector. We can click it to see more details. Let me make this window wider. And we see the same information here. The location column is just gibberish string that we cannot really extract the latitude or longitude. And this is where generated columns come in handy. We can create a new generated column that holds the latitude and longitude in a human readable format. The PostGIS extension comes with this STY and XTX function that allows us to extract the x-axis and y-axis, or the latitude and longitude, from the point value that we have. Let's run this to create the columns. Great, now if we try to create a table, we should see the latitude and longitude being displayed. And just as expected, we see the latitude column and longitude column. Let's make sure these new columns are being reflected on the real-time inspector as well. Let me update the restaurant name again. And we see a new real-time update popping up. Click it open and we should see the new latitude and longitude being displayed right there. And this technique is very handy if you want to use the real time in combination with the PostGIS extension. And that's how you can use generated columns in Postgres to query your data based on a derived value. I also mentioned PostGIS extension in this video, but if you want to learn more about it, you can check out the video right here, where my teammate Thor talks about PostGIS extension. I'll see you around in another Postgres video. Bye.